Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome once again to the Intel booth. We're glad that you have looked inside and joined us. Now, from the stage throughout this week, we've been having some of the best experts and thinkers behind many of the newest ideas in the mobile industry. And we hope that these presentations prove to be useful for you. Now, we're just about to begin one, which is uh, the customer's perspective from Telefonica, one of the biggest carriers in the world. So please welcome Mr. Francisco Javier Ramon Salguero, who is head of network virtualization labs at Telefonica, and from Intel, the global director of strategic solutions, Mr. John Woodgen. Gentlemen, please take a place. So good, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for coming along. Intel has been collaborating with Telefonica on network function virtualization. And we've had some tremendous uh, success with uh, CTE. And Javier is going to start off with an overview. And then we're going to sit down and uh, have, a, have a few uh, conversations around some aspects of that, uh, that project. Over to you, Javier. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So uh, first, I'd like to give you a short interview of what we are doing in, in Telefonica with the virtual CPE and how we think that this would change uh, for the good our in network infrastructure. And it's a uh, big use case for us. And it's uh, not only because of the own use case, because it's quite interesting what we see, but it's because also allow us to change, uh, steer the change in our network in the way that has been presented by Telefonica during the whole Mobile World Congress. Well, first, what is the use case about? What we have uh, today in our deployments before the virtualization came, is what you have on the top. You have a customer premises, the customer home, you have one uh, home router, and you have in that home router not only the, the physical functions that are needed, I mean the, the Wi-Fi, the, the, the a place to connect the wires and all that, but also you have some software running on that, uh, on that element. The problem with those that software is that it changed from one uh, CPE model to another, and it's, it's a common source of uh, incompatibilities in the future and even and inconsistencies in, in what you have deployed. Other thing that happens is when you uh, launch advanced services, you need extra boxes to put in, the, in that box, I, in that home, li like the box that you all see on top. For instance, for IPTV, you need a set of box there. And you can have, for any single service, you have a, a new box to put in, in customer uh, home to maintain it, upgrade it, and, and make it coherent with the rest of your network infrastructure. Yeah? With the uh, virtual CP use case, we change completely the picture. We return to the basics. We return to the most basic things that you need, that is essentially the connection. You need one switch to connect things physically, an access point to connect by Wi-Fi, and a modem to interact with the access network, but that's it. All the physical stuff and all the logical stuff is moved to our network infrastructure and maintained there in a virtualized infrastructure, okay? So all those functions that were running there in that element are now running in, 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 in network infrastructure that can be easily extended and, and, uh, and updated, okay? And even adding new services is simpler because we can just plug them here because they will automatically be connected to the home. We don't need to send a technician there to bring a new, a new set of box. One cool thing from this is that we don't need to replace all our CPEs. All, our, all the equipment that is already in our subscribers doesn't need to be physically replaced. Just needs to be reconfigured to move from here to here. Obviously, for greenfield de uh, deployments, we would consider simplified CPEs. But it's, it's, it's something that I is an, an added value, but at least we want to preserve the, the new subscribers with the good model, okay? Why is this possible? Because we, the, the benefits are, are obvious. Why the operators were not doing this before? We all have identified this use case as something appealing. The question is that the technology was not ready yet. yet. And here is come where comes network virtualization. Network virtualization allow us to do this in, 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 in a cost-effective uh, manner com by combining network functions virtualization with SDN technologies. Yeah? It's, it's the, uh, Elements that can be uh, defined completely by software and can be interconnected in an automated way. Okay? And this is the kind of infrastructure that we are building to support this uh, scenario. In fact, 
what might happen is, uh, I mean, we, we are not going crazy. We don't want to replace all our single network at once. We want to feel that transformation by these districts and transform our network infrastructure. This is what we are doing. We can start building on top of the current infrastructure uh, and having a partial deployment of that deployment but then that infrastructure keeps growing as long as this uh, model is adopted until it becomes the mainstream uh, infrastructure. And once this infrastructure is ready, it's also ready for other use cases that are not as strong as this one, because this is a, 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 a use case that is quite powerful in terms of uh, OPEX savings. Uh, and, uh, but any other uh, functions that could be uh, supported now are ready in this infrastructure, okay? So that is, in a nutshell, what we, we are doing. Thank you, Xavier. That was very interesting. So what, uh, could you help us understand what are the, what have been the driving forces for Telefonica to do this? Why, why is Telefonica making this investment to change so much here? Yeah, well, there are a few, a few things here. First, because we want to, to change the way that we operate uh, our own network. I mean, uh, this, this makes it m way more efficient because we can centralize some of the functions and, and, and do it in an homogeneous way. E every single home uh, is, is the same. I mean, we, we are not, we need to pay attention to every single device that is uh, deployed in every single home because essentially they all become the same and the function is centralized. So that's a, a huge saving. Is that so you're doing this to save money or to make money? Yeah, it, it saves uh, it saves money in the in that in that aspect. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, the the, the the more efficient that you are, uh, you the more efficient you are, and the more risk that you centralize, the more risk that you save. Right? I'll give you an example. If there's one in trouble in one of uh, the customer homes, you need to send a technician, and most of the cost is is is, is, is the fuel. <laughs> is is the, the the guy driving to customer home going there and returning? It's not the technical action there. It's not the, 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 the even the replacement of equipment. I mean, it's expensive, but it's not as expensive as going there and see what's happening. Here, you don't need to go to uh, uh, and bother the subscriber uh, to fix something that could be s something relatively simple to, to solve technically. So that kind of efficiencies are the, w the ones we want to capture with this use case. And also, one second thing that is related to that is that whenever that we want to launch a, a value-added service, we need to re-architect our network again. We need to do everything from scratch. And sometimes uh, the TCO is, is supports it, sometimes it does not, because it's a huge transformation all the time. With this model, we get much flatter in our network architecture, so we can afford trying many, many use cases, many new services that could be deployed with low risk, because we, are we don't need to change everything again. So okay, so saving money, OPEX, but also opening up the opportunity for new yeah, services. Yeah, exactly. What's the benefit to the customer? Yeah, uh, well, the, the first thing that the, the customer is, is, is noticing, and I'm saying noticing because not right now we are uh, in trial with, with this technology in Brazil, is that they, they see le less failures. I mean, the, the equipment is, is uh, we are demanding the home equipment much less things. And second is that they can get more flexible uh, spaces in, their in the same uh, services. I mean, for instance, one thing that we are showing in, uh, in, our, in our booth right now is how the IPTV service is transformed. You can go to multi-screen. If you are not tied one to one set of box, you can go to multi-screen directly, just connecting to the, to the home router. So you can use several screens. And even more, you can control it from your mobile phone. And you have your whole experience on, of services with Telefonica, and even your own personal space for storage. You can keep it there, and you can control it there, and, y and, and you can have how you say, n a non-fragmented experience with the offer that uh, Telefonica is bringing you. And since all that is actually not tied to your as a physical element at your home, you can even bring it with you. So if you, if you have one, one home, uh, regular home, another near the coast, you can bring it with your mobile, all those services, and then fix your mobile in your other home, and everything comes up. So that's uh, something that is, is, uh, is quite simple because the technology allows you, but we couldn't do it with the former model. And that's what the first thing that the subscriber notices. So it saves Telefonica money, it opens up new opportunities, you have more satisfied customers, presumably less churn as a result. Yeah. Um, yeah, why so. now? Why not five years ago? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. I mean, uh, 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 it's a good question because everyone had this in mind. The, the thing is that the technology was not ready. If we, are, we had wanted to do this 
all those functions that were running in each customer home and need to be brought to the our network, we don't need to change completely the elements that were in the border of the network. We have no other needs. But now we network virtualization technology allow us to complement what is not available in those elements. We don't need to replace them. We need to uh, add the new functions that were not available there, which it which uh, allow us to, to integrate them pretty well and also extend the capacity whenever it's needed. So I it's more evolutionary if you want. And that's what makes possible to give the first step because otherwise if you want to go straight to the last step of this transformation, you it never happens. You need some, some path evolutionary and it's what uh, the uh, virtualization technology allow us. You've got to be pragmatic and do it one step at a time and yeah, bite exactly. off what you can chew. Um, could you help um, the, the people here understand what uh, Intel did to help you in this process? Yeah, I, I, I we are. I, I must say that uh, the role of Intel in this uh, in this project has been fabulous. I mean, fr from taking into account that when we started talking, it was just a use case, something that we had failed in the past, <laughs> and we had uh, some challenges. And we, the first uh, question that we had. They will support all the workloads that we'll need because we have millions of subscribers. How <laughs> many servers would I need for one single point of presence for doing that? And they have helped us to improve the performance uh, by, by tenfold, I mean, so non conservative in the figure. And then they help us to identify the right technologies that could be applied to the use case, to find the right ecosystem around this. So, so uh, definitely quite happy, uh, happy with them because uh, this collaboration is what has make it happen. So in Intel helped navigate through the complexity of the ecosystem. Now, obviously, you mentioned this trial is in Brazil. Uh, are there plans to spread the trial? And how else could the people here actually get a look at what's ha happening? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right now, as you say, we are in trial in Brazil. It was announced by our global CTO this week that it will be launched by the last uh, quarter of this year in Brazil as a commercial service and will also be extended as a trial uh, to, s to Spain and likely to other countries as you, you know it's, it's a part of a it's not a part of a, a trial in one local operation could, could have been but in this case it's driven by the global uh, unit so it's a use case that is available potentially for all the uh, uh, in telephonic operations. And um, uh, is there a demonstration here at uh, Mobile World Congress for people yes, to see? Yes, yes, and uh, I'd like to to invite anyone who wants to see what is experienced from the customer perspective, which is the one that is, is shown there, that uh, come to our booth and see how the DCP works and uh, what is the experience across the IPTV service and the, the, the personal storage and so on. I think they will be quite impressed. Okay, Javier, thank you very much indeed. That thank was you very a very much. good overview. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.